Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about techniques. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what are the techniques that you follow to refactor complex code and make it readable? Well, uh, this takes a bit of uh, that thing that everybody hates me talking about, experience, uh, in my opinion at the very least. It's the... I have a few principles that I try to follow the when I work on projects and let me give you a bit of an insight into sort of my thought process on how I try to structure the architecture of the systems that I work with and how I try to approach refactoring in general. So there are two fairly distinct differences that I think we should establish first. So when you talk about complex code and making it more readable. Now, in a simple case, well, it's not really simple, you might think be thinking about something as a algorithm, a specific function that does something very sophisticated. And in those sorts of situations, I usually have a slightly different mindset. The, there are overlaps, of course, between the principles that I follow, but I have a slightly different mindset uh, than I have when I'm dealing with a legacy system. In other words, I might have a system that is fairly ugly, or it's uh, very big, or it's poorly maintained, and so forth. That's the one that I usually get to practice the most, because most software developers do... Well, it depends on the nature of the complexity. I'll give you two concrete examples uh, where I actually very recently had uh, had to do this, where I will argue that if you're dealing with like an algorithm or something like that, even though it might be a very sophisticated algorithm, it's usually easier for most software developers to keep that fairly clean and keep it fairly simple to understand. And what people usually do is that they introduce uh, what I call in circumstantial complexity, but that usually only happens when the problem is bigger or when it grows in multiple areas at the same time. You will may or may not have heard me say that every software system is, in essence, it grows like a tree, where in the beginning, when it's a very simple or like a small tree, it's just sort of you establish the trunk, but then you start getting branches and multiple people are touching the system at different times. And if they are not synchronized on how to do things, you get all these branches and the whole thing starts like sort of going on all kinds of directions. That's when people you should start getting confused because now they can't keep the whole system in their head, which causes a problem for them because now they can only work on one thing at a time and things stop being consistent and so forth and so forth. This is one of the things uh, that, as I said, I do a lot of the time and I have techniques for how to deal with this. But let's start with the simple case. So let's say that you have a very sophisticated algorithm. I'll give you a concrete example. So a few weeks ago I had to support, I had to work on a feature a web application at this what this was and the feature is something as simple as a drop down menu that simulates a file system so if you've ever gone to your like application you know your folder structures or something like that it's basically that outline where you can you know open folders select elements and so forth and so forth now for those of you who may not know that that's what we call a graph problem a basic or a Tree it's a tree structure basically uh, and that you can call it a graph problem if you want to but the thing that is complicated with that is that it's uh, it's one of those sorts of problems where it seems simple but it's actually one of those things that you might find on lead code where you have to traverse a tree of nodes and then structure them and then group them in certain ways I had a few extra complexities introduced to me on this problem and so in that situation I took a look at the code and it was fairly poorly written like in this case it was TypeScript they weren't using any type system whatsoever and so the principles that I try to follow when we're dealing with such a fairly complicated problem is that I try to figure out what the components are of the, so of the solution so in other words what are the entities that I will need in order to make this happen what data model do I need and then I extract that into 
basically it's a divide and conquer strategy. I try to segment the different parts of what needs to happen into isolated functions and small data structures which I can unit test in isolation and then I start working with the base case always. So in other words in this situation my base case is all right can I given if I have a, in this case it was just a recursive function that sort of traverses a data uh, traverses data so my first question is what data structure do I do I need in order to make this traversal simple so like what do I do? Well, I have a bunch of nodes, and so the first thing I have to do is to create a list of all these nodes, and then I have to name them, because the tree, in this case, it has you know, properties. Each node is going to be, either you can delete it, you can expand it, uh, there might be different icons or texts or so forth that needs to be in the data structure that we show on the UI. So I create that model first, separate that, so I sort of have an idea of how the end result is going to look like, right? And then I say, all right, let's put that in an array because now I need to start looping over these things and start grouping them based on whatever file path we're dealing with, right, or namespace in this situation. And so by taking it step by step, by first dividing it into the data model and then thinking about, all right, so now I need to take these two nodes, like this one should go after that one, and then what data structure do I need to do have for that? And then I put that into a function and then I just make the function do one level. In other words, first it should be able to just render out a flat list of folders and then I should be able to add a child folder and then I go fancier and fancier. So I sort of build up through unit testing because this is a high complex problem. Uh, layer by layer I add complexity in cases and that helps me think about the problem easier and it usually makes the code a lot cleaner because I start pulling things to, uh, away from each other and it's isolating them into smaller pieces. So that's the technique that I usually use. Iterative divide and conquer methodologies when you're dealing with high complex functions or things like that. That usually helps a lot, uh, and especially if you can find a clean data structure uh, that makes sense for the domain that you're dealing with. The other thing which is more complicated is uh, there is a bit of divide and conquer here as well when it comes to high complex systems. So this requires a bit of like it, it, it requires you to sort of understand different software developers and what's going to make sense for the domain. So the first thing I usually do is that I learn the domain so I know what nouns and like what verbs we use to describe different actions or different components within the system. And then I generally try to modularize things into different areas of the code. So an example would be most of you who've done MVC will have heard about the layered architecture where you usually have a data layer a business logic layer and some type of controller or network layer where you just have take the incoming network requests, right? These sorts of divides are very useful, so the divide and conquer principle apply here as well. But I also have different uh, specific things that I do that I know uh, will simplify because that's the thing that I always go for. What can I do to simplify and not abstract? That's the difference here because for a lot of people, uh, simplify means that I create this fancy abstraction that does something magical and you know it's that's the end of it, right? I always see that people fail at this and the concrete example I can give you is that so I was working on and this was in the same project uh, with developers who had issues with this where so we had a this in this case we had a few backend systems that we needed to connect to in order for our service to basically work. And so the problem that the developers had faced was that they wanted to simplify the connection that they needed to make. In other words, how do I interact with these backend APIs? So what they had done was to create a function that took a URL and a bunch of different pr uh, parameters in order to s construct a URL and the necessary, like basically the payload and the request needed to connect to that backend API. Now the problem was that they were trying to do this quote unquote as simple as possible. So they just created one super function that knew how, and it very quickly became this sort of configuration hell where you had to copy paste this function a hundred times and you had to input like the URL a hundred times and then the, get the parameters in, in correctly and some defaults had been added that wasn't always true. So you had like overrides where you could say that I want to use the query parameters or I don't want to use the query parameters. So very quickly their interface start or the abstraction started to fall apart. And this is people trying to, as I like it, it's the same thing when you see people use like extremely um, heavy usage of gen generics or things like that. They're trying to 
use it, the dry principle or something similar to the very like to to the furthest extent possible because they believe that that makes their code better or simpler. So what I did is the thing that I usually do, which is to follow the principle that you will see for most if you work with cloud solutions or so forth. Cloud providers, up if we're not going to count Terraform, but even Terraform does this. So what they do is that they separate their different connections, like their SDKs, into specific areas, specific modules that are dealing with something. Once again, divide and conquer, right? So we have more than a few backend APIs. So what I did was to, instead of actually trying to be that super generic, was to simply extract all the different endpoints that we connect to into simple REST clients that we wrote for by hand because we couldn't generate them, unfortunately. Put them in the different domains. So we had like for assets manage and assets API we had something for well I'm not going to use the domain specific but product APIs customer APIs user API etc etc and just divide those into simple modules that did exactly one thing all they did was and this was already pre configured under an abstraction so they got a function you know get all users get user by ID etc etc and all the and then they took just a subset of the you know, it's all, it's just a subset of the query parameters that that super function needed to have, right? And what happened was that you, uh, I of course get some thoughts about this from the people who are super generic and so forth, and they say, well, now you're breaking the dry principle. And I go, well, the thing that is not dry about this is that yes, you have to recreate, like you have multiple clients, you sort of basically have to copy paste the client code in order to just make the connection. But what has happened is now that each of these interfaces, it's much cleaner, because if you're not going to work with all of those features, it's sort of, imagine a really complicated uh, website. If you don't care about 90% of the features for the thing you want to do when you're dealing with, say, one of the features, then that extra stuff is just noise. And the reality is that although I'm slightly breaking the dry principle, depending on how you want to look at it, it's actually simpler for the developers to deal with this. And then we moved all of these API clients into a simple API folder. And now the developers have had one place where all their different clients lived. It was a folder where they could see, oh, if I want to deal with that resource, it's that client for the database connection. If it's that resource, it's that one. And the code was so simple that a junior level software developer on their first day can completely understand that, oh, okay, if I instantiate that object, I get these functions and they connect to that endpoint there. And then, of course, you add a little bit of like a documentation, where is the API specification if you need to talk to the team that supports the API. That simply, even though there was slightly more code, the code became simpler. And that's the thing that I go for when I deal with these sort of systems. I try to figure out how can I create modules that are digestible to people and put them in the architecture that is simply the easiest for them to comprehend. That's a good principle that I try to follow. So what I want you to take away from this is that usually when I deal with high complex code, I have two approaches. If it's a very sophisticated uh, algorithm or function or something like that, I try to go with an iterative approach, divide and conquer. Start by figuring out what type of end result you're looking for. What data model do you actually need in order to achieve your goal? And start with the model. Once you have that, try to figure out, okay, what data structure is necessary in order to uh, execute this function? What is the end result I'm looking for? And then create a function or functionality that just deals with the base case. Start with the simple case first, get one thing right. When you have tests and you can validate that, yeah, this thing works, add another layer of the complexity and then sort of an engine approach. Add layers of complexity as you go along until you've reached the end of your specification. Second thing is when you're dealing with high complex systems, like we basic code bases or systems in general, try to figure out how to simplify the system, even if it costs you slightly more turn in terms of code, like don't optimize for minimum amount of code or maximum making things maximum, uh, you know, the absolute most generic that you can make it because abstractions are uh, things that can go wrong. And if they go wrong, complexity just sky rises immediately. So try to think about the coworkers, try to think about the people around you and think about how can I modularize, divide and conquer again, my different element, the different areas of my code into something that is easy to digest. If you're just looking for that one thing, as I was saying, you just want to deal with one of the backend APIs, why do you have to deal with logic that deals with all of them at the same time? It just increases complexity. And then put them in a place where it's easy to find them, it's easy to like get if they need like documentation or some type of reference material. Think about it a little bit as a being a teacher. How can I make this easy for someone who just has that one problem to find the code, 
and to bite size to just figure out what this part is doing and then divide it out into smaller pieces put them into like I like to do modules as I said put things that make us have association to each other in the same place and make sure that no one has to figure out a hundred things just to figure out that one thing that they're actually looking to do these are the principles that I try to follow and as you can imagine this is down to sort of experience as well, learning how people usually think uh, in your project, talking to people, figuring out usually what patterns they feel are easy to follow and so forth. But there are a few guidelines that you can follow that are like universal, as I said, layered approaches, divide and conquer, loose coupling and so forth. Have a great day.